Hey, I'm Alex and today we're going to work on the first problem from PSAT 1 of CSFT's introduction to programming with Python, which is called Deep Thought. I'm going to skip reading this text here. If you would like to, you can stop the video and go through it quickly. But I'm just going to move on to the main prompt of the problem. So in deep.py, implement a program that prompts the user for the answer to the great question of life, the universe and everything, outputting yes if the user inputs 42 as a number, or case insensitively 42 with a dash or 42 with a space, otherwise output no. So here's a quick demo we can go through, um, but I believe that um, this prompt was very descriptive so we've got a pretty solid idea of what we're expected to do before we begin we should create a folder called deep and inside of it create a file called deep.py so let's go to our vs code i have already created a folder for pset one um, and now i'm just going to say make a new directory mkdir uh, which is going to be called deep. Um, sorry, I wrote dep. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to delete it quickly. Although we can rename it. Oh, yeah, let's just rename it deep. Um, now I would like to go inside of it. So I want to say change directory to deep. And once I'm inside of it, I would like to create a file, a Python file called, so code. Um, deep dot pi. Okay, there we go. Now we have the file and we're ready to get started. And the first thing we would like to do is ask the user our question and store their answer in a variable, right? That's what we almost always do. So I'm first going to use the input method and inside of it, I can write some kind of a prompt to the user. So in this case, uh, we already have the prompt. Uh, it should be, what is the answer to the great question of life, the universe and everything? I'm just going to copy it from here and modify it a little bit. So we need quotes. And inside of this quote, we want to have what is the answer to the great question of life, the universe and everything question mark. All right. So we're asking the user for input, for the answer to this question. And once we have it, we want to store it in a variable that we can later use, right? So we can say answer equals the result of this input. So whatever the user inputs, we store it inside of this answer variable. And then we just need a couple of conditional statements or one conditional statement. I'm going to show you a couple of different options. Um, in order to check whether the user has entered 42. So the first option here, now the, like the first technique I'm going to show you is not optimal. So I don't recommend that you use it, but it's the most intuitive one. So I still want to have it here. Um, so the first option is that the user enters 42, right? Like as a number. So we can come here and say, if the answer is equal to 42 um, then print yes but now if we test this this is probably not going to work and i'm going to explain why um, let's run our program so we can say python um, deep dot deep dot pi so what's the what is the answer to the great question of life, the universe, and everything? And I'm going to write 42. But then we see that we didn't print yes. Why did we not print anything? Well, because remember that whenever we take the user's input and store it in a variable, it's stored as a string. So in this case, we have a string 42, which is not equal to the number 42. If I want to check for the string 42, I can just put it in quotes like this. So if I save and rerun the program, enter 42, we can now see that we've successfully printed yes. 
By the way, I'm just going to come back to one, line one and add a space at the end because this is really annoying. We have a question mark and a 42 immediately after that. Okay, so that looks better. But this is not the only valid option, right? We also want to consider 42 um, as a word with a dash and with a space. All right. So once we have this, we can come down on line five and say else if or elif uh, with a Python syntax. If the answer is not 42 as a number, but it's oh, sorry to equal signs, but it's equal to 42 with a dash, we want to still print yes, right? Like this. So let's run the program. And this time I'm not going to enter 42 as a number, but as a text, as a string, 40-2. Okay, so we've got an error. Um, name answers is not defined. Okay, so it should be answered. I've accidentally added a, an S at the end. So we save and we refresh 42. And we see yes. So the third option would be 42, but with a space, right? So we come here and say, else if the answer is equal to 42 with a space again print yes like this so up to this point what we've got is first we check whether the user's answer is equal to 42 to this number if it is we print yes and we skip the other two because we've already figured out what it is but in case it's not equal to 42, we move on to our second statement, which is if the answer is 42 with a dash with words, then print yes. If it is, we print yes and we skip the third option. But if this is false, if the answer is not 42 with a dash, we move on to the third conditional statement, which is if the answer is 42 with a space, then print yes. But then, these are the only three valid options. So if we've got none of them, like if neither of these is true, we want to say else. After you've checked all of these and you've realized they are false, you just come here and print no. Because it's the answer is not 42. So let's try to run this. Um, I didn't test the 42 with a space, so let's do this very quickly. 42, this should be output yes. But now I'm going to try to enter like seven and we've got no. If I try to write 76, no. But sorry, this was 67, <laughs> not 76. Okay, that seems fine, but Let's just go back to our um, problem prompt. As you can notice here, it's mentioned that these have to be treated case insensitively. So this means that if the user enters 42 with capital letters, we should still be able to recognize it and print yes. So currently, if I run my program and write 42 with uppercase letters, this is going to print no, but we don't want this because 42 is still 42. It doesn't matter what the case is. So we would like to change this and have yes. Now, of course, we could add some more options to check for the uh, 42 with capital letters, but this would be so hard to implement and we would have so many conditional statements because there is one option where just the first letter is uppercase or just the second letter is uppercase or only the third and fourth letters are uppercase. This is so long. So the easiest way is to just um, take the user's input and directly convert it to lowercase so that you know that for sure your answer is going to be uh, in lowercase. And if the user has entered 42, it's already going to be in lowercase and you're going to be able to recognize it, identify it and print yes. So let's rerun the program and I'm going to enter 42 with capital letters again. And this time we see yes. Why? Because after we take the user's input, we first convert it to lowercase and then compare it with the, these options here. Okay, that seems great. Let's try running check 50 because most probably not all of the tests are going to pass. And again, I'm going to explain why, but let's see. 
This is our check 50. Okay, hello. Okay, so now we see that indeed we have one test that didn't pass. Let's read what it is. Input of 42 with spaces on either side yields output of yes. Expected yes, not no. So what happened here? We take the user's input, but imagine that it's like this. Um, space, space, 42, space, space. Um, I don't want this, full stop. So in this case, we are comparing this string with it for spaces with this string without spaces. And since they're different, we output no. What we aim to achieve right now is to remove the spaces, no matter which side they're on, whether they're after the number or before the number. How can we do this? Well, in Python, there's a special method, which is called strip. I don't know if I've already showed it, but it's very easy. Just after converting the text to lowercase, we can add one more method, which is strip. So dot strip, strip like this. Um, you could also add it before dot lower. It doesn't matter. These two methods are independent and you can feel free to choose uh, the order. But again, I would just repeat what we're doing. We're taking the user's input, we're converting it to lowercase, and then we're removing any spaces on either side of the text. We only want the content without the spaces. If we come here and retry, so I'm going to run my program again, um, and I'm going to enter space 42, then three spaces, for instance, we see yes because we're first removing the spaces and then comparing 42 to 42, which is essentially the same, and we're printing yes. All right, let's rerun check 50 to make sure that this test that was red has now become green. All right, great, now we see that our tests have passed. So this program works correctly, but can you notice that we have a line of code that repeats a couple of times? Print yes, print yes, print yes. Um, whenever you have such a case, there's most probably a more efficient way to, way to solve the problem. In this case, what we could do is we could use the OR operator. So if we have three conditions that make a string valid, we can use all of them on one line. And here on line three, we could modify to say, if the answer equals 42 as a number, or the answer equals 42 with a dash, or if the answer equals 42 with a space, then print yes. And now we can remove the other two conditions, which shortens our code a lot. If the answer is 20, 42 or the answer is 42 with a dash or the answer is 42 with a space, then it's valid and we print yes, else print no. That's so simple, right? It looks very, very easy to read. And let's just rerun check 50 to make sure that we haven't joined in anything. Okay, so I'm going to actually stop it here because it because I just noticed that I've missed the closing quote. So I'm going to um, just rerun check 50. And we see that again, all of our tests have passed, but I believe that this solution is much better than the previous one. Now there is a third way, but it's more advanced and I don't thing it's worth using here. I'm still going to show it, but please, if you're beginners, um, just skip this part, right? Uh, you have the timestamp, so you can... Actually, we've already tested it, so um, please feel free to just try to re-implement your solution or something like that. But for the people who are curious to find another way, what we could do is we could create a list of all valid numbers. Uh, sorry, not valid numbers, but valid answers. So we can say valid answers equals. And now inside of this list, we're going to have the three options. So the first one is 42. 
The second one is 42 with a dash and the third one is 42 with a space. Again, I'm not going to explain in detail what the lists are. If you're interested in that, you can just um, take a look at uh, some internet articles. I think this is mentioned in the lectures as well, but I'm not sure if uh, it's included in this lecture in PSAT 1 or maybe in some future lectures. But once we have all of the valid numbers listed, we can just come back here and remove this thing and just say if the answer that the user has entered is in valid answers. So if it's one of, sorry, valid, valid answers. Um, so if the answer the user's input, uh, if the answer the user is entered matches one of these strings, no matter which one exactly, then print yes, else print no. So let's retest. Okay, so we can see that the solution was successful as well. That was everything for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and I'm going to see you in the next video.